What's going on Cigar World? What's going on Cigar Enthusiasts? This is Jack the Cigar Enthusiast and I'm back with another video. And today we're going over the delicate process it takes to make that perfect or unique cigar. With that being said, strap in, buckle up, and let's go. Today we're smoking on an LFD Chapter 1, which is a La Flora Dominicana cigar. This is a perfect cigar for this scenario because it's a very, very unique cigar. This is a, a very robust and powerful cigar that has a exemplary amount of flavors in it. One flavor that really tends to overpower the rest of them is a very peppery or bold flavor. The purpose of what we're here to do today is go over the delicate process it takes to actually create that perfect cigar that meets your needs. A lot of people like regular cigars, which is your Toros, your Robustos, your Lanceros, those round cigars. A lot of people favor those, but a lot of cigar aficionados or cigar enthusiasts, we like to go out and try different cigars and try, you know, some very unique cigars. And if you know anything about LFD, LFD is a brand that is notorious for unique cigars because they use their different type of skill sets that their people have to to really make a product that's not very common on the market. This LFD, if you notice, that it goes from a round shape to a box press, to a box press torpedo, right? Which means that it has a very pointed uh, tip and it also is a press. So it's used for gripping if you're a biter or try to you know, hold your, your cigar in your mouth. It's really easy to do that. Why I like this cigar and why I'm really a fan of this type of unique cigar, because they also make another one called the Chapter Two, but I'm a fan of them because if you notice that the cap leaf starts right here. So you can easily cut this part off with a straight cut and really, um, you know, enjoy the smoke. But this is uh, a cigar that was explained to me early on in my cigar journey, uh, how to properly smoke it. And how you properly smoke it, if you notice, I have a punch on each side. A punch on the front side, a punch on the back side, which opens up the cigar just the amount that I like my cigars. I don't really like my cigars opened all the way up with a straight cut. I like to like it to be very regulated, which is why I always use a V cut. But using these punches on the cigars makes for a perfect pull on these cigars. Here to explain today is how these companies make such a unique cigar um, that really benefits all of us and it really gets us to our first point is the cultivation process of how to create that perfect cigar so there is a little theory out there that says about roughly about 200 people touches your cigar before it gets to your hand to actually smoke and some claims even say that it's even higher which means that there is many many people that it takes to perfect that cigar based on their skills uh, within the process, you have people that pick the tobacco, uh, plant the tobacco inside the fields, uh, ferment the tobacco, people that separates the tobacco based on the quality of the, the leaf. There is such a huge process that goes into making that cigar that you love so much and that I love so much. So it's best to really understand that process. So the true cigar starts off as like any plant does, is a small seed. And within that seed process, there those seeds are grown and really babied in a greenhouse where they're cultivated to a point where they can actually create some type of plant and be planted in the field. Not things that are grown um, such as potatoes, corn, and different things of that nature can plant the seeds in the fields and kind of let them sprout. One thing with tobacco, you really want to baby them because if not, the bugs will typically start to eat them away as they become a baby plant. So you have to understand that process, which is why seeding is very important. You must wait until the plant reaches a certain amount of inches before you can transplant that into an actual field for it to actually flourish. At the full height of maturity, 
The leaves are removed by hand and harvested and hung in a barn to turn dry. And that is really where the burning process takes place. If you watched Art of the Rapper, you'll see I talked about the different aging process that really go into making your cigar to light. There's a few dozen hands at that very moment before the tobacco was even left the farm, right? After the tobacco has been cured and taken to the facility, unpacked and piled up, it goes through something called fermentation. Fermentation is a very important process that must happen in order to ensure that all bacteria and chemicals and pesticides and different things that could pretty much kill us um, if it makes it to us is removed. Separate the leaves that they got from the barn that during the, the browning phase and spray them down and then they separate them on dry racks to really air out and then they repack them and stow them for the aging process. Now the aging process really depends on the type of cigar in which they're trying to create. Whether it's a Maduro or Oscaro then we know the aging process is four years at minimum. Now, if they're trying to make a candela, the aging process may be a couple months. And then obviously for your Sumatra and your Habano wrappers, those are in between the Maduro aging time as well as your candela. But that process is another process where a lot of hands are touching your cigar or the tobacco prior to it actually getting to the point of it being rolled. Now, the outer wrapper leaves will also undergo a destemming phase which is a process where the thick and central veins is actually removed from the leaf. Sometimes the step is completely done by hand and then other times they have machines that are in place for them to actually remove the stem itself. But majority of the time they are done by hands, which again makes for another dozen pair of hands that would touch that wrapper or touch that leaf prior to it getting to you. Again, more hands. Right? And then don't forget about the rolling process. The rolling process is a delicate process. And if you've never been to a roll farm to really understand how that process works, you have somebody that the stemming of the actual leaves within a filler because the stems doesn't go inside of a premium cigar. Actually, no cigar should a stem of a leaf be inside. So it goes through the destemming phase, and then it also goes through the filler phase, creating the filler. Then it goes through the binder phase, and then from the binder phase, it goes to the, the rolling phase. Then they put them in through a, another system that really checks to make sure the pressure within the cigar uh, is adequate, which means that they rolled the cigar right. So we have to understand the rolling process. We have to, we have to understand, again, there's a dozen more hands that touch your cigar prior to it getting to you. Now, rollers, a lot of people don't understand the rolling phase of it. Um, I actually have a good video when I went to the Bahamas to Great Cliffs factory where they actually roll all their cigars. One thing about Great Cliffs, if you don't understand, those are... Uh, a tobacco that's grown and manufactured in the Bahamas and it's actually a really good cigar. Again, another cigar that you could put into your bucket list of things that you want to smoke. But the factory workers dial out the proper portions of the aged tobaccos to roll each day. And they're put into different bins that are set aside. So when they're done with those bins, they grab another bins and those are the cigars that needs to be rolled for the day. The Torcedor uh, takes those piles of leaves back to their rolling station and then recreates the cigar according to the cigar maker's blend. Bunching and rolling each cigar by hand. The blend is formulated based on the specific tobaccos that need to be a part of a certain cigar. Those blends really are the main ingredient to the creating the smoker experience, which is a formulation that is put together, again, using more hands, right? After they have created the blends that they need for the cigars and rolled the cigars, uh, finished cigars goes back to the aging room and they are finally banned, they're boxed up and then sent out to the distributors. This is a chronological step on how a cigar is actually made from the time it's planted as a seed to the time it's in your hand ready for it to smoke. But again, it takes hands to go through that process. Now that is the basics, but let's take it a step further. So after it's boxed up and sent out to the distributor, the manufacturers to go ahead and get these cigars out to the lounges, the smoke shops or whatever, 
they also go through another pair of hands. Then, once they get to the smoke shop, the owners open them up, inspect them to make sure they don't have any deficient uh, cigars, which is another process done in the warehouse before it gets there. But again, things happen, things slip through the cracks. So they go through it, they evaluate, again, another pair of hands. Now understanding that this process may sound gruesome to some people, but understanding these operations, these delicate quality control to ensure that there is no extra germs or pesticides or anything that's going to go on this cigar that can become harmful to us as the consumer. There is a lot of people set in place with different skills in order to really perfect the cigar in which we like and perfect those unique cigars that we tend to uh, gravitate to when they're in the, the humidor. So with that being said, we, it's always great to take an extra step into learning the whole entire process of how cigars are produced. So with that being said, understand that when you see a unique cigar, just know it took an extra level of precaution and appreciate all that hard work that was put out to really allow us to enjoy our favorite hobby, which is smoking cigars. This is Jack the Cigar Enthusiast. If you haven't already, like, share, and subscribe. Um, hit that notification bell, turn it on to all, so therefore you have all the top updates on when I post my videos, and so you can really dive into some more cigar knowledge. If you haven't already, go on Facebook, subscribe and like my page, Dapper D Cigars, for a lot of exclusive content once my cigar website launches. Also, go follow me at Jack the Cigar Enthusiast and Dapper D Cigar Emporium on Instagram, which all that is right below in the comment section. If you have any questions about anything I went over, do not hesitate to comment. I am very responsive and my goal is to make sure that you fully understand the process. So with that being said, I am Jack the Cigar Enthusiast. Thanks for tuning in and I'm gone.